Hello everybody, today I am going to go over how I installed a Home Master reverse osmosis water filter system. Uh, full disclosure, Home Master did not pay me uh, and they are not aware that I'm making this video. I am just do it, making this video because some of my family, friends, and coworkers um, bought this same water filtration system after I did and a lot of times they come across with questions since i am going to continually recommend this product i realized that i might as well just make a video of it now when i did all of my recordings i did this over a year ago um and uh, i just want to make sure that this is a product i want and after a year i am very confident that yes i really like this product this reverse osmosis system so now I'm putting a video together and in this video, I'm going to go over two quick things. First, why I purchased this reverse osmosis system and second, just my experience on how I installed the, the system underneath my sink. Now, there are many reasons why everybody picks a reverse osmosis system. For me, the main reason is the multiple options of different stages of water filtrations uh, I can I can switch in and out. Um, there's some extra f filtration options on there where they can add minerals and UV light. Um, I don't really care about minerals. Uh, the only reason why I think somebody would add minerals to their water is just to make the flavor taste a little bit better. Um, some folks believe that's the case. I don't really I can't really tell the difference. So uh, I'm not adding minerals for a health purpose. I mean, I can just take my own vitamins if I if I wanted the water to have minerals in them. I do like the UV light uh, fun, uh, option in there, and that's what I have in mind. And finally, the big factor why I really like this reverse osmosis system is because they have a permeate pump in it. Um, with the permeate pump, my water waste ratio is a one-to-one -one ratio, which means every gallon of water I have come out of the faucet of the reverse osmosis system, I waste one gallon of water. For those who are new to the reverse osmosis system, which finds this shocking that I am wasting one whole gallon of water for every water I, I, I drink, this is actually a very low ratio. A lot of systems out there uh, waste a whole lot more than, than a one-to-one -one ratio. My older um, reverse osmosis system I used to have, I think it's around like a, a five-to-one ratio. And if I don't change the water filter, it's as high as 10-to-one ratio. Um, in fact, this Home Master, if you do not have the permeate pump, it is a four to one ratio. So um, if you get this if you get this reverse osmosis system, definitely get it with the permeate pump. Now, if wasting water is a big issue for you, there is another product out there, and it's the only product that I know that is zero wastewater. Uh, the product is from Watts. W A T T S Watts. It's called a zero waste reverse osmosis water filtration system. The only catch with that is it uses a electric pump and it pumps all the waste was water back into your hot water line. Um, I at work I actually have this system at work and it's a great product. Um, I tested the water at work and it. It, it does just like any other reverse osmosis system does um, with the great thing that it does not waste water. It just pumps all the water back into your hot water line. The pump isn't that loud, but again, it does require electricity. So you can't have your cake and eat it too, I guess. All right. So without further ado, let's just go, go ahead and move forward. And I'm going to talk about how I installed this reverse osmosis system at my home. So as you can see in this photo right here, you can see from left to right, first the assembled reverse osmosis filter cluster. It comes pre-assembled. Um, you don't have to connect any of these um, different stages of water filtration with each other. 
Uh, of course, it's really easy to disassemble them and reconfigure it the way how you like if there are certain filters you want to add towards it or remove from it. Um, and moving towards the right, you can see a bag of uh, hardware and then the permeate pump. Next is the reverse osmosis faucet, the manual below, and then finally in the next photo you can see the uh, tank, the storage tank. Now you're supposed to drill a hole in your countertop where the faucet will mount towards. For me, I did not want to drill a hole. What I did was I removed the soap, liquid soap dispenser. Um, now, the hole for that is a little bit bigger. You're supposed to drill a, a half inch hole um, through your countertop. Um, so for me, this is a lot bigger. I think this is almost a one inch hole. Uh, it's still mounted very well. So right here, I'm going to install the faucet. I am wrapping Teflon tape around the threads. Uh, you only need about five to 10 wraps around the, the threads. And so next I'm installing a rubber washer. Uh, and after I put the faucet through the hole underneath it, as you can see in the next video, I am then now installing another rubber washer underneath it and I'm tying it down with a lock nut or wing nut basically. So after I have the faucet installed, next I am now turning off my supply water, uh, the cold water line. I turn it off and after I turn it off, I disconnect the water line that goes to my main faucet. And after that, I install the easy adapter on the cold water line. So all I do is just, I just tighten it on there until it's hand tight. And finally, right here, I just use a wrench to tighten it up until it's snug. And then I connect the cold water line back to it. Now, as you can see, um, water can come out if uh, you're pointing, uh, I guess, the shutoff valve towards the uh, water line outlet. Now, I'm turning it sideways so that way no water will come out now i'm turning back the cold water line i'm turning back on the the cold water uh, just so that the faucet has water above so the next thing i'm installing is the drain saddle clamp and the drain line for the clamp itself um, first you just locate a position uh, above the P-trap. Um, now, don't forget that since this is where the wastewater is coming out, um, there will be a dripping sound. So if the higher you place the hole, the more, in my opinion, the, the more dripping sound there is. And then the lower it is, then it's too close to the P-trap itself. So just find somewhere in between. Um, and after you locate it, you drill a one quarter hole in, in there. Now I have PVC right here. You might have a metal drain. It's the same thing. You just drill a hole one quarter. Um, you find a one quarter drill bit and you just drill a one quarter inch hole into it. So as I'm drilling, I do not drill through the other side of the pipe. I'm just drilling a hole on one side of the pipe and I peel off this uh, uh, this uh, sticky foam um, I guess in hindsight probably I should have drilled a hole first and then put the the foam on there but it is what it is and now I am installing the clamp itself when you install the clamp make sure that the inlets the hole on the clamp uh, faces the hole in 
your pipe and I just use a um, Phillips screwdriver and I just tighten it up, that's it. So right now I am removing all the zip ties off of the reverse osmosis cluster system. Um, just so that right now I can mount the cluster system onto the wall. Now at the last page of your manual has a template and it shows where you want to drill the hole to put the mount on um, the wall so that you can lock in your reverse osmosis cluster system. Um, right here I am, after I found out which location I want to install the mount. I have the mount installed and I have the mount for the uh, permeate pump installed at the bottom. And right here I just push the cluster in and it snaps right in. This falling video, I push the pump in and again, it locks right in. So after I have all of that done, now I am installing tank valve on top of the storage, water storage tank. So I wrap Teflon tape at the inlet of the tank about five rotations with Teflon tape around it. And for this one, again, it's just hand tight. Uh, don't over tight it. It's, it's plastic against metal, so you don't want to strip it. But uh, again, you just want to tighten until it's snug. So after I have all the parts located underneath the sink, now it's time to connect all of the tubes in the right locations. So as you can see right here, I am connecting the black line to the storage tank, push it in, and, and you can tell that the tube locks into that fitting right there. So the black line, the black line goes to storage tank, orange line goes to the cold water outlet from the easy adapter. Um, and let's see, and then the red line goes to the drain. Now the drain, you just push it in and then you tighten the lock nuts until it's snug. Again, the red line doesn't have any pressure, so don't worry too much about leaking water. But again, you just tighten it until it's, it's, it's snug. And finally, the blue line goes all the way back up to the faucet. Now, as you will see right here real quick, um, there is a teed off location on this blue line. That teed off location is if you want to feed uh, this uh, the reverse osmosis water into your ice machine or refrigerator line. So finally, you do need power. Now the power is for the UV light. So now I'm ready to pressurize the reverse osmosis system. So first and most important part, this is where I kind of mess up a little bit, is make sure that the tank, water tank valve is closed. Now, the valve, is, the valve is closed, the ball valve is closed when the uh, lever is pointing away from the water line. If it points towards the water line, that means that it's open. If it's, uh, I guess, perpendicular to it, 90 degrees angles to it, then it's closed. So first, remember to close the ball valve of the water tank. Very important. After you have that, 
Now you slowly open up the easy adapter ball valve, which is where the cold water will come out into your reverse osmosis system. And now go up to your uh, faucet, your reverse osmosis faucet, and turn it on. You will see some dark substance come out. That's the loose carbon. And you just let it run for a while. Um, it might take two to, the manual says 20 minutes for water to come out. I guess it all depends on the PSI from your water main. For me, it pretty much came out, after, the water came after like just a couple of seconds. Uh, I just let it run until it, it becomes clear so that the carbon is all gone. So after the water is clear, now I can uh, turn off the reverse osmosis faucet and I'll go down underneath the sink and, I'll, and I turn on, I open up the ball valve to the water tank storage. And at this point I am pressurizing the system water is being added to the tank and it takes just a couple hours the manual says one to three hours for a tank to be fully filled once it's fully filled uh, then the last step is turn off the ball valve again uh, from the main water line to the reverse osmosis system and i pretty much drain the whole water tank and after that's complete drain, this is called a, a flush system and it needs to be flush twice before you use the reverse, before you start drinking from the reverse osmosis system. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I guess happy water drinking. Bye.